Hi, uh, my name is Wee Xiong Go, also known as Shou Go. I'm a principal investigator here at the Institute of Molecular Physiology under Sunzhen Bay Laboratory. And this is my lab here at the 18th floor of the Gao Ke building. What do we actually do here at the Go Laboratory at Sunzhen Bay Lab? We know that RNA, or ribonucleic acid, is typically a single-stranded biopolymer. Now, let's imagine them as words that can be formatted. They can be underlined, highlighted, made bold, italic, or have their colors changed. This formatting is analogous to RNA modification. Different RNA modifications play different roles in our bodies. One way to think about it is, okay, you know, uh, everyone knows about the human genome. Uh, human genome is basically three billion base pairs of letters. Your, you have your A, C, G, T, you know. Uh, this is it's just a combination of these four letters, but three billion bases, base pairs long. But what's important is the way, they, the way that they are arranged then will determine the kind of RNA and proteins that your body makes. Why is that important? Basically, the proteins that your body makes will control all the various aspects of your being. Your eye color, your skin color, your height, intelligence, hair color, you know, your, your blood type, uh, and perhaps most importantly, your susceptibility to various diseases. Sho and his team study how RNA modifications influence the health of human bodies and how to develop therapies for different diseases caused by defects in various RNA modifications. In our body, certain proteins are responsible for writing, erasing, and reading RNA modifications. So that's kind of something that our lab is interested in pursuing. And so the question is, how do we want to do that? His team develops new technologies to sequence RNA modifications find factors that influence RNA modifications, and observe how RNA modifications affect molecules, cells, tissues, organs, and human bodies. And in order to do that, basically these are the tools of the trade, and this is just a, a typical molecular biology bench, calculator, various tubes of different volumes, like a, a typical uh, Voltexer for mixing stuff. For Sho's team, the first strategy is to find out what are the writers, readers, and erasers. Now that I've prepared the various reagents, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the different RNA amounts with the fluorescent reagent that I just described. And by adding a fixed amount of these to the same fluorescent region, reagent, and then we measure how much signal they produce, we can then calculate based on the signal that's produced by our samples, how much RNA there is. To manipulate an RNA modification, one must first identify where it is. For the team, the second strategy is developing new technologies to sequence and map the locations of RNA modifications. Let me know when the time is up. So first sample has a concentration of 88.6. With all the information collected from the first two strategies, the team comes to the third strategy. Understanding how different RNA modifications impact different diseases and developing therapies based on studying RNA modifications. Through these three overlapping strategies, Sho and his team are gradually approaching their ultimate goals. So, uh, Yifan here is our bioinformatician who is responsible for a lot of uh, programming work and data analysis. There's so much more, there's exponentially more data every day. So we need to have the capabilities to analyze the data uh, through programming. And that's why it's uh, important to be able to you know, do both wet lab experiments as well as what we call dry lab data analysis these days. It's not surprising that we now know that these chemical modifications, you know, sometimes they are supposed to be there, sometimes they are not supposed to be there. So when they are supposed to be there and they are not, or vice versa, this can lead to various diseases. So imagine this, this is healthy, this is a sick person. You can see they are the same, except that in the sick person, uh, their RNA lacks the square modification found in healthy people. And then let's say we, we, we first sequence using te technology development, we sequence and we find out that this 
uh, there's a square multiplication in healthy people that's missing in that's that's missing in the unhealthy people and then we try to see okay what if we can we can then uh, rec rescue this this square thing we go identify what is the rider the the protein that's responsible for creating this square multiplication and we add it back to the sick person and then we first see whether or not does it actually recover the square multiplication and then we see by rescuing this square multiplication does that then turn the sick person into a healthy person so that's kind of our, our I would say the ultimate goal try to develop these epitranscriptomics based therapies Shenzhen just like Shanghai and Beijing is trying to increase its uh, expenditure on funding biomedical research which I believe is a very good move uh, both for science and also for the economy not only do they provide us with the funding to do research, they let us decide exactly what kind of research we want to do. And as someone who has done research in the USA and in Singapore, uh, multiple places in, in both of these countries, I can tell you that that is extremely rare. So that amount of uh, faith and trust that the leadership has in us is what I believe uh, will take Sinsen Bay that very far uh, into the future and help make this place a very successful research institution.